And what up everybody, welcome back to Pro Publications YouTube channel. On this channel we talk about zines and DIY publishing. Feral Comics is the comic book zine anthology that I publish. It's filled with cartoonists from around the world. It's underground, subversive cartooning. If you guys are interested, link will be in the show notes to our big cartel shop where you get the year subscription or just a single issue. So I wanted to rectify something. Uh, recently, I did a review of the latest three issues of Reptile House Comics that, I, that I've gotten and uh, issue three, four, and five. And in it, there was an artist by the name of Rob Wood. And in particular, I talked about his comic, Land of the Dead. So I really enjoyed it and it reminded me of a graphic novel that I read and I had mislabeled that comic. I called it War on the Block, which it is not. But I found it in my comic book collection. I thought, why not go through it for multiple reasons? One of them being, I love the art. Second, this is definitely cartooning that has a purpose that really is subversive politically as well as aesthetically. Uh, number three is that it is a DIY uh, effort in the sense that the creator really owns it, has uh, paid to get these books bounded the way that he saw fit, and sells them himself through his shop, which we'll get into later on. And so that graphic novel is called War in the Neighborhood by Seth Tobok Man. And so I thought, let's peep it out. Let's go ahead and look through this. So here it is, you guys. War in the Neighborhood, a graphic novel by Seth Tobok Man. Tobook Man? I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. With an introduction by Luke Sante, a story of people in struggle. And look at this. Look at this cover, man. Look at this panel. So this story right here is a, is a story of New York that I don't think a lot of people know. But beyond just that, look at the art, man. For anyone uh, still thinking that comic books are all just superhero comics, you know, they're not. And they weren't for a long time. Let's see when this comic book came out right here. Look at how old this is. 1999, y'all. This is right here. This book is not a work of history, biography, sociology, or any type of science. It is not factual and is certainly not intended to present it in any court of law as evidence that anything ever actually happened. This book is intended to be a work of art. Yes, it is based on real situations and events, just as a landscape by Van Gogh may be based on a real landscape. But we would not hire Van Gogh as a surveyor on the basis of those paintings. I ask that these stories be judged not on how accurately they depict particular events, but on what they contain of the human spirit. I will leave matters of fact to those who profess to be experts in them. The politicians, lawyers, news media, district attorneys, buildings department inspectors, fire marshals, police, public relations officers, and appellate court judges, who, as we all know, are forbidden to lie. The silhouette. That's another thing that I like about this a lot. There's a lot of talk about the punkers and the punk scene and the intersection between punkers and uh, just organizers and the revolutionary type shit, right? The people united. And look at the panels, man. I always love it when like you can see a page full of panels like that, this splash with the building going over the panels. It's just good layout, man. It's so dynamic and just look at that. It's just pleasant to look at. You know what this feels like? Honestly, it feels almost like flyer art. I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of old school punker flyers, but I got a few books on that. We should, we might have to just whip that out and peep it out, man. We see, like, I, I love this, man. There's just something about this. Look at it. It's so simple, yet has so much emotion. It says so much just through the art. Never mind all the words, because a lot of it is very poetic and lyrical. But just look at the art and how much it emotes, right? This idea of like the hired goons, the powerful, and then the working class people being, you know, gentrified and pushed out of their properties. And this is kind of like a weird history because it's this idea of like, this is the same era when they're burning down buildings and things like that. And like, you see it a around a lot of pop culture when they're talking about, you know, New York in the uh, 70s and the 80s. Kind of going back to uh, the get down where they're burning down buildings. There was a Danny DeVito movie as well where his dad tries to burn down the building because he's a slumlord. So like, you know what I mean? And this like building of resistance because they end up occupying the building. But like, 
just look at it, man. There's nothing crazy about this, but look. Even the way he's demonized the equipment that they use. It's just hella poetic, man. Hella poetic. This is the one I like a lot, man. Where he's just this fella just trying to walk his pup and like he ends up getting caught up in a lot of this shit. Because he's just a fucking normal dude, but he's just not a piece of shit. Look at this panel. I like this panels. Spraying them with a the beer. Tell me that doesn't look like me. Tell me that don't look like me. Put it in the comments. Does that look like me? Living in New York back in the day? My time traveler. Put it in the comments. That's one thing that I have a pet peeve of, you guys. Because I'm an animal lover. You guys know I'm a vegan. So I don't like when they portray piece of shit police officers as pigs. Because pigs haven't done anything to y'all. Pigs are fucking smooth. Stop demonizing pigs. They're actually cool animals, you know. We need to come up with a different name for... These hired goons. Look at that right there. So simple, but it reads, right? It's a helicopter. But it's just the outline, kind of. Them running through the night, dancing. You know, it, it, this stuff goes deep, man. And it goes through different time periods that really is like a, like a history of the United States, man. Talking about like the HIV epidemic and things like that. And it moves fast too. Like this is something like you get absorbed in this man because it sets a tone and a mood. Especially when he's talking about like living and, and squatting in different buildings. That stuff is hella interesting to me, man. Look at this panel. A lot of this shit should be stickers, man. Fascism don't believe the hype. I love it because it's not super clean. It looks messy. There's a passion in the strokes. If that makes sense. Kind of like the slum the slum villages that were kind of spawned out of the gentrification. Which for a lot of people that, that haven't studied gentrification, man. That shit is a motherfucker. And that's usually what ends up occurring. Uh, if you, you know, skid roll and things like that. A lot of that came from the downtown uh, Los Angeles gentrification. It always kind of pans out like that. And another thing that this brings to my mind is like uh, the John Carpenter movie they live of these like tent villages and all that basically being created by like, you know, this hyper neo-capitalism. And like that shit is real, homie. And like in a lot of ways it strikes a nerve, right? Of what basically it will be. Look at that. That's straight up flyer art, man. Look at this. This is the actual pictures, kind of, of his lived experience. What else could the squatters do but to make fun of these wannabe stormtroopers in blue? You know, had kids that were squatting as well. The conclusion. And I'm just going to finish it off by reading this last page, right? To show you guys kind of the lyrical way that he writes. And it reads, If we can look at an abandoned building and imagine it full of people. If we can look at a vacant lot and imagine a garden. Then, why can't we look at each other and imagine what we can become with time and work? It is a good thing to take up the struggle against oppression. It is also a good thing to make mistakes in that struggle and grow wise. How else would we come to know ourselves? Boom. So for more information on him and his works, you can go here. So this is his website here. You can see the amount of books that he has for you guys to peep out. His information will be in the show notes for you guys to peep it out. I did not purchase my copy. I actually got my copy from my brother. So that's all I got for you guys today, man. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your homies. Let's go ahead and keep building this thing up. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Lights.